Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, whenever the routine at Madison High School is disturbed in any way, Principal Osgood Conklin registers serious objections. And he usually blames our Miss Brooks, who teaches English there, for the disturbance. But the latest upheaval in Madison's schedule was definitely not my fault. Two weeks ago, the Board of Education put a television set into the school to see if its cultural and educational programs would enhance our regular curriculum. Last Thursday at breakfast, I discussed it with my landlady. What effect has the television set had so far? Well, Miss Fitzgerald, who conducts the TV group an hour a day, says there's one very marked result, Mrs. Davis. In just two weeks? That's right. There isn't a student at Madison who can't tell the difference between a Pinto and a Palomino at one glance. <laughs> they do have a great many cowboy films on, don't they? I would say so, yes. But there are quite a few murder mysteries on, too, and some splendid horror films. <laughs> but, Connie, the board placed the set in the school for its scholastic value. Don't they televise any purely educational programs? Oh, I suppose so, Mrs. Davis. They had a semi-educational program on yesterday. Semi-educational? Yes, I think it was called The Batman Eats Up the Dean of Harvard. <laughs> Well, I'm sure they'll have more and more cultural things to look at as time goes by. Oh, that reminds me, Connie. It's been some time since that letter came for you. Did you get it? Letter? No, I didn't get any letter. Oh, uh, me and that absent mind of mine. And I purposely put it where we couldn't overlook it. On your plate. My plate? Oh, dear. <laughs> How much of your eggs have you eaten? <laughs> Every bit but this blue part with the black line stamped. <laughs> Here's the letter, all right. Uh-oh. It's another letter from the collection agency. The collection agency? Yes. Sherry's department store has put their delinquent accounts into the hands of the Coulter Collection Agency. It seems I've owed Sherry's about $25 for my Easter shopping. You mean they're making all this fuss at Sherry's because you haven't paid them since Easter? Easter 1945. <laughs> what does the letter say? What does it well, say? It says that I've either got to pay the money at once or they'll notify my employer and attach my salary. Oh, this is terrible. You know how Mr. Conklin feels about anyone who gets into debt. I wish I could help you, Connie. But the only money I've got is what you owe me for back rent. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to dig into that. <laughs> well, I've got to be leaving for school, and maybe someone there could lend me some money. How about Mr. Boynton? Mr. Boynton? Yes, he might have something saved up. He should. He's a bachelor. <laughs> Don't rub it in. Of course, I kind of hate to ask him for a loan. Oh, nonsense, Connie. I'm sure he'll be happy to help you. He'll probably hand you $25 before you've even finished asking for it. It'll take longer than that to open his money belt. Wait up, Miss Brooks. I'd like to chin with you for a spell. Huh? Oh, it's me, Tex Martin. Oh, for a second there, I thought the television set came out in the hall. <laughs> I've been hearing a lot about this here television. I got to get me a look at some of that stuff. A mirror is cheaper. <laughs> I don't like to rush you, Tex, but I'm really... The reason I stopped you, Miss Brooks, I wanted to tell you Mr. Boynton's looking for you. Mr. Boynton? Yeah, he seems right fond of you, ma'am. With no intention of sounding forward or personal, I'd like to say that I think the man who gets his brand on you is a mighty lucky hombre. Well, thank you, Tex. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to the biology lab and get some branding irons in the fire. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, come on in. Oh, thanks, Mr. Boynton. What is it you wanted to see me about? 
Well, it's a... Uh, Miss Brooks, for over four years now, you and I have been, well, friends. Don't rub it in. I mean, of course we've been friends. Well, it's, it's very difficult for me to have to do this, Miss Brooks, but I, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Now, that's a coincidence. I have a favor to ask of you, too. Really? Well, that makes it easier for me to ask mine. Miss Brooks? Yes, Mr. Boynton? Can you lend me $25? $25? Why, well, I don't like to flaunt my erudition, Mr. Boynton, but you ain't heard no coincidences yet. I came in here to borrow $25 from you. What? I got a letter from a collection agency this morning. A uh, collection agency? The, the Coulter Collection Agency? Yes. Do you take from them, too? <laughs> They wrote me a letter saying they'd notify my employer if I didn't pay them $25 at once. Was yours an overdue charge from Sherry's? Well, yes. I bought some presents for my twin nephews, Mike and Danny, on their fifth birthday. And Sherry's is making all this fuss because you haven't paid for them yet? Well, the twins were nine on Friday. <laughs> Bill, but I just haven't been able to. Neither have I. And if Mr. Conklin finds out from the agency that... Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Oh, what is it? I'm going to tell Mr. Conklin about my predicament myself. For the honor of the school, he might advance me the money. Well, do you think he'd do the same for me? Well, it's worth a try. I'll tackle him first, then you can have a whack at him after lunch. That sounds pretty dangerous to me, Miss Brooks. Do you really think you ought to take the bull by the horns? Certainly. And I can see the headline now. Girl Toreador tossed into the bleachers. Come in. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Conklin. I don't like to disturb you, Let's but... Let's not start the day with half-truths, Miss Brooks. <laughs> what do you want? Well, sir, it's like this. I... Uh, do you mind if I open the window? The window? Just the width of a human body. It's quite comfortable in this office. Now, get to the point, please. All right, I will. I need $25 to pay a delinquent bill I owe at Sherry's department store because they've turned it over to a collection agency which wrote me a letter saying that if I don't pay it promptly, they'll take it up with you. And as small as it is, I've grown too attached to my salary to have it attached. I thank you. What? What? <laughs> Am I to understand that one of my teachers is in the hands of a collection agency? $25 worth of me is. I wanted to pay it, sir, but what I... What a deplorable state of affairs. Obviously, your self-indulgence and mismanagement have brought you to this sorry plight. Yes, sir. But if I can just get some help this I one time... I suppose I'll have to do something about the situation. If the Board of Education ever found out about this, it would really reflect not only on you, but on your school and its principal as well. Naturally, I don't want any skeletons in Madison's closet. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Conklin. It's terrifying enough around here without that. <laughs> Who is it? I'm from the Calder Collection Agency. Oops, he's here already. What should I do, Mr. Conklin? Where can I go? Now, calm down, Miss Brooks. One moment, please. I'll handle this matter. You go into my inner office and wait there until I call you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks very much. Come in. My name is uh, Gray, William Gray. I'm with the Coulter Collection Agency. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Gray? I presume you're here in regard to a debt of one of Madison's teachers? Uh, no, I'm here in regard to a debt of one Osgood Conklin. <laughs> Osgood Conklin? Uh, yes, yes, I'm new in this town and haven't had much of a chance to get acquainted. Uh, Sherry's department store tells me he owes them $50 since 1948. Uh, could you help me find Mr. Conklin? What kind of a looking fellow is he? <laughs> Have you any idea? Well, uh, he was described to me as a dumpy sort of chap. <laughs> uh, thinning hair and a mustache that looks like an unkept lawn. <laughs> what? There's no such person in this vicinity. 
Although, come to think of it, there was an Osgood Conklin employed here four or five years ago. I believe he was the school custodian. <laughs> the one I have in mind is the principal of this school. The principal? Now? Yes. And if you happen to hear from him, would you be kind enough to inform him that unless he pays the $50 he owes by this afternoon, we will notify the Board of Education and take steps to attach his salary. But you can't do... Th uh, uh, the, that is, I'll be happy to inform the gentleman this way. <laughs> now, as the new school custodian, I'm quite busy, so if you'll excuse me, I'd like... <laughs> yes, uh, certainly. Uh, thank you for your courtesy. That's quite all right. Good day, Mr. Gray. Good day, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> well, at least I'll have time. Good day, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Dad, he knows. <laughs> oh, well. I'll think of something. Miss Brooks, you may come in now. Is he gone? Yes, yes, he's gone. Oh, by the way, you didn't happen to overhear any of our conversation, did you? Why, Mr. Conklin, you know there's a key in the keyhole. I mean, uh... <laughs> that inner office is practically soundproof. Good, good. Well, I can't possibly advance you any money, but in spite of your incompetence in managing your personal affairs, I've put Mr. Gray off your trail, at least temporarily. Oh, thank you, sir. At least I can go to my first class in peace. Well, don't mention it. But before you go, I think I would like the window opened after all. It got quite hot in here rather suddenly. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? Yes, I do, Mr. Conklin. Especially for school custodians. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. While a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. While a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helped stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath while the toothpaste while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, since Mr. Conklin was a charter member of the Bad Debt Club along with Mr. Boynton and myself, we were all faced with the same dilemma. How to stall off the Colter Collection Agency before it took unpleasant action that afternoon. I was pondering this weighty problem in the school cafeteria at noon when Harriet Conklin and Walter Denton, two of my lesser problems, approached the table. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. Walter. Greetings, most majestic mentor. <laughs> we kneel at your feet, oh gracious queen of the faculty. Arise, knight. <laughs> With this butter knife, I dub thee Sir Appetite. Sit down and have some lunch, Walter. No, I just ate, Miss Brooks. Oh, come now. You can think of a better excuse than that. <laughs> We're cutting down on our lunch these days, Miss Brooks. Why, Harriet? So we can enjoy the popcorn better when we watch television. You have no idea how we enjoy the school set, Miss Brooks. Hey, it's a wonderful medium for education. Oh, now, just a minute, Walter. I've watched some of those shows. Do you call those Western movies educational? Well, certainly. Of course, it all depends on what an individual's looking for. Now, me, I watch them to learn about customs and manners of a great era and a great adventurous people. And Harriet, on the other hand, watches them for another reason. What does she want to learn? How to slide a glass of beer down a long bar? <laughs> 
an educational program shown, Miss Brooks. We just haven't been able to get them lately. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you kids do get something out of the television class. Oh, we do, Miss Brooks. Miss Fitzgerald is most helpful and constructive. She keeps the room in just the right degree of darkness to make the picture come out sharp and clear. As a matter of fact, Harriet and I are on our way to the television room right now. But, Walter, it's only 12.30. There's nothing permitted on television until the class at 2. I know. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Brooks. It's a great place to hold hands, Miss Brooks. You ought to drop in there with Mr. Boynton sometime. Oh, fine. <laughs> Little did I think in teacher's college that someday I'd be on the faculty at Lowe's Madison High. <laughs> Pardon me, Miss Brooks, but is this table occupied? No, Mr. Boynton. The occupation force has just left. <laughs> Sit down, won't you? Oh, thanks. Well, I haven't been able to get the money for the collection agency as yet, have you? No, I haven't. But we're not the only indigent faculty members at this school. Our principal owes a bill, too. You mean Mr. Conklin's in the same boat we are? He's not only in it, he's rocking it. <laughs> While I was in his office, I heard Mr. Gray from the agency threaten to expose Mr. Conklin to the Board of Education if he didn't pay up $50 by this afternoon. Why, that's terrible. <laughs> Tragic. <laughs> must be some method whereby we, we could pacify the agency until we could pay up. In that way, maybe... Wait, I've got an idea. Maybe we could put up something as security. You know, temporary collateral. Collateral? Oh, but I haven't anything that's worth $25 with me, and even my watch... I know, it's in the same window as mine. <laughs> well, what we might be able to do is give them one item that might serve as security until we all pay up. Let's see now, isn't there something right here at school that looks impressive but is completely unessential? Sure there is, but the collection agency would never accept Mr. Conklin as security. <laughs> oh, please, Miss Brooks, this is serious. Say, I know what might work. We'll offer them the school television set. So far, it's been most unessential. Oh, but it's not our property. It belongs to the board. We'll only be borrowing it, Mr. Boynton. And since we'll be helping Mr. Conklin out of a jam, too, he'll be sure to cooperate. Yes, the more I think about it, the more I like it. I'll call Mr. Gray and have him pick up the set immediately. But, Miss Brooks, are you sure Mr. Conklin will stand for this? Mr. Boynton, I'm positive. I can hardly wait to see his face when I tell him about it. I'll bet it turns absolutely human. <laughs> This is the office of Osgood Conklin, the principal of Madison High School, himself speaking. Isn't that nice? Well, this is himself, head of the Board of Education on this end. What? Mr. Stone, how nice to hear from you, sir. I was just saying to myself... You can now, tell me about it this afternoon, Conklin. I'm coming over to see how that television class is working in your school. The television class? But, Mr. Stone, are you sure this afternoon is convenient for you? Maybe some other we time... We went to considerable be... expense to install that set two weeks ago, and I've got to find out if the experiment is worth it. I'll see you in about an hour. Goodbye. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Stone. Oh, everything happens to me. I hope that collection agency fellow doesn't come snooping around this afternoon. Whoop. He won't be back until tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, oh, come in. Mr. Conklin, I've got some delightful news for you. Really? When are you transferring? <laughs> Even better news than that, if that's possible. What I wanted to tell you, sir, was that I've put up some security and the collection agency isn't going to bother us again until we're ready to pay them back what we owe. Why, Miss Brooks, you have no idea what a relief this is to me. Just before you arrived, Mr. Stone called and said he was coming over this afternoon. It would have been terribly embarrassing if he'd run into that collection chap. Oh, it certainly would have. But if I say so myself, and who else is going to, <laughs> I have successfully circumvented that catastrophe. Yes, sir, I just used the old noggin and... Mm, well, tell me, Miss Brooks, just how did you manage to stall them? Well, I simply called Mr. Gray and had him pick up the school television set. 
And in return for that, he agreed not to... You had him pick up what? <laughs> the school television set. You see, sir, I think... Oh, God! The reason Mr. Stone just called was to inform me that he's coming over this afternoon to witness the school set in operation. What? But he can't do that. I mean, we've got to do something. You've got to do something. <laughs> the author of the infamous plot just outlined to me, the responsibility for all further action rests with you and you alone. Yes, sir. Even while you were talking, the very tiniest mouse of an idea began nibbling at my brain. If I know you, Miss Brooks, he'll either starve to death in five minutes or emerge as the most terrifying spectacle since the Phantom of the Opera. Well, we're assured of the cooperation of the kids, Mr. Conklin. The rest is up to us. It's a desperate measure, Miss Brooks, but I'll do my part. Now, as I understand it, you are to remain here in my office to receive Mr. Stone, and I am to return in about five minutes. Correct. Believe me, Mr. Conklin, when Mr. Stone leaves here, he'll be delighted that our TV set is no longer on the premises. I'd like to believe you, Miss Brooks. And now, as I leave this office where I spent so many joyous years as Madison, <laughs> the love dictator, a principal. <laughs> I can only say, as I open this door, that if I am about to walk into the shadow of unemployment, I shall not walk alone. Isn't he sweet? <laughs> oh, give me a home. da 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 Come in. Good afternoon, Miss Brooks. Is Mr. Conklin in? No, sir. So where is he? Well, I can't rightly say. <laughs> he just sort of took off like a big-winged bird. <laughs> what? More well, likely just moseyed down the hall a piece. Come on in and sit, Mr. Stone. I'll chin with your spell. <laughs> chin with... Miss Brooks, do you realize you're talking to the head of the Board of Education? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stone. It's just that I've been watching so much television since you had it installed at school that this here Western palaver comes right natural to me. <laughs> that set was installed for strictly cultural purposes. And that's the way it's been used. It's already tied and branded most of the young'uns here at Madison. The young'uns? <laughs> Pardon for busting in, Miss Brooks, but have you seen anything of my pappy? <laughs> Nary hide nor hair, Harry. But you haven't said howdy to Mr. Stone, gal. Mr. Stone, you know Harriet Conklin. I used to. <laughs> howdy, Mr. Stone. Right nice to meet up with you again. Now, who's she supposed to be? Calamity Jane? <laughs> Why does everybody spend so much attention to Westerns? As far as I'm concerned, they're nothing Hold but... Hold on there, Mr. Stone. That kind of palaver don't go in these parts. What's that? You was about to say a discouraging word. <laughs> I'll say more than that. Excuse me, folks. The door was open, so I thought I'd just lope on you. <laughs> I don't believe at all. <laughs> well, now, this is Tex Barton. Tex, this is Mr. Stone from the Board of Education. <laughs> well, if and he's a friend of yours, Miss Brooks, he's a friend of mine, no matter where he's from. <laughs> I see you. This farce has gone far enough. Why are you talking in this manner, boy? I don't know no other way. <laughs> How long have you been speaking with this, this Western drawl? Well, I've been talking this way since I was ankle high to the drooping fetlock of a stunted pindo. <laughs> and you can't get 
lower than that and lessen your drive in a submarine. He can't have always talked this way. Television isn't that old. With him, it's standard equipment, Mr. I don't get this. Does everyone at Madison want to be a cowboy? Oh, no, sir. Several of them have expressed a desire to be Indians. <laughs> when this TV proposition was broached... Oh, oh there you are, Conklin. Uh, sorry I'm late. Now, I guess you must think I'm a pretty ornery maverick. <laughs> In off while you're squatting on your haunches in my corral? Oh, for heaven's sakes, not you too! Mr. Conklin's watched television very closely. Yeah, I, I've observed it thoroughly, partner. I mean, Mr. Stone. All I can say is the influence it's had on this particular school is positively abysmal. Oh, I agree. Yeah, what you said. That, that's why I took the liberty <laughs> of making a rather radical decision today. Mr. Stone, what would you say if I told you that the television set was no longer with us? I'd say good riddance, Osgood. Splendid. You would? In that case, I must, with humble pride, accept your congratulations, sir. The set is off these premises. And as I would have taken full censure, so must I take full credit for its going. Huh? <laughs> In its concept from the beginning, this action taken for the good of the school was my doing and mine alone. And I know Miss Brooks will be the first to bear me out. Definitely. How do you want to go? Head first or feet first? Our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... You get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves by shaving the palm olive brushless way. Yes, smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless way. Boom. Hey, that's a fact, men. You can get smoother, yes, more comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Just rub velvet smooth palm olive brushless into your beard. You'll find it wilts the toughest whiskers. Actually protects your skin by providing a soft film that floats your razor's cutting edge. Remember, over 1,200 men tested the palm olive brushless shaving cream way following directions on the package. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four reported beards easier to cut, less razor pull, smoother, more comfortable... Yes, more comfortable shaves. So, men, try the palm olive brushless way yourself. Even in cold or hard water, you get a close, clean shave. And a smoother, more comfortable, yes, a more comfortable shave. You get smoother, more comfortable, comfortable shaves the palm olive brushless way. Next time you shave, try the palm olive brushless shaving cream way. Now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, as soon as Mr. Stone and the others had left his office, Mr. Conklin admitted that he was grateful for my assistance. Then, in the manner so typical of the man, he immediately conferred upon me my reward. Miss Brooks, in appreciation for your meritorious service, I have decided to bestow a rare honor upon you. You will be permitted to type up in triplicate six copies of my latest report to the superintendent of schools. <laughs> And have it on my desk tomorrow morning. Miss Brooks, you haven't answered me. Where are you going? I'm going to head them off at the pass. It's the only way to save the fort. This is Bert Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show. Brought to you by Pomoly Shave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Arthur Allsberg, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. 